Hello and welcome back. I am Alcaris and I react to things. Today we're back with some more Kurzgesagt. This black hole could be bigger than the universe. Hmm. The only thing I can think of, now hear me out, I just want to make a prediction before we get into it, is the holographic principle, where the idea is that we live in a 2D projection on the surface of a black hole which is a way to also solve the information paradox. And therefore, the universe could be a black hole. That would be the only thing I can think of. Maybe this is a video about that. Maybe I'm completely off base. Let's find out. You might be inside a black hole that's ah. inside a black hole that's inside a black hole. Called it. Everything in existence could be black holes all the way down. It turns out black holes are much weirder than you think, and oh, they so break weird. the universe much more than is usually explained, destroying time and space. Mm -hmm. And they may actually create infinite universes in the process. But before we can get to that, let's first build a black hole out of air. Notice the phrasing, could. Okay. Lots of theories, lots of things that are mathematically possible but not necessarily we believe are the case. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this is one of those things. Yes, we can do it in math. No, this probably does not represent reality. Everything can become Furby. a black hole if you squeeze it to a critical limit. You'd need to squeeze Earth down to the size of a coin for it to turn into a black hole. Oh, wow. The sun needs to be squeezed down to the size of a small city to become a black hole. Okay. And if a lot of mass is concentrated in a really tiny space, you get something super dense. This is usually how black holes are explained. Stuff becomes super dense and collapses into a black hole. Yeah. But actually, you don't need any ultra-dense stuff to make them. We're ignoring some maths here, but all you really need to know is one <laughs> thing. The larger black that's the best way to make arguments, usually. You just ignore the math. Ignore the science. Ignore the facts. Just argue. <laughs> it's unfortunately becoming a lot more common these days. Black holes get the less dense they are. So, really large black holes are kind of thin. A sun-mass black hole is only about six kilometers wide and has a density of about one Himalayan range per cubic meter. The supermassive black hole at the center huh. of the Milky Way has a mass of 4 million suns, a diameter of 24 million kilometers, and a density of 6 blue whales per cubic meter. Wait. The ultra... Wait a minute. I think I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around this. So the bigger they are, the less dense they get. But that's denseness per area, right? And that makes sense because... The denseness is actually from the singularity at the center. So if you count the circumference of the black hole as, say, the event horizon, it would make sense that the bigger and bigger they get, the average density throughout that entire uh, point of no return gets lower and lower as the area gets bigger. I think that's what they're saying. A massive black hole Iris 2156 has a mass of 3.8 billion suns and Ooh. is as wide as the solar system. But because it's so large, it is only as dense as air. This That's kind of crazy. But once again, this is average density spread out throughout the entire area of the event horizon, right? There's still an infinitely dense singularity at the center. Means, at least in theory, that if you take a gigantic balloon and fill it with undecillions of tons of air, the moment it gets to the size of a solar system, an event horizon suddenly forms and it turns into a supermassive black hole without violence or squeezing. A vegan black hole. <laughs> is this mathematically the case? Because I got to be honest, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a physicist. I have absolutely no authority or no backing on this topic. 
No formal education. I just watch YouTube videos, man. But I'm not buying this. Doesn't pass the sniff test for me. So now, let's think big. What do we need to make a black hole the size of the universe? A universe-sized black hole. The chunk of the universe that we can see from Earth is a sphere with a radius of 45 billion light years, okay. filled with hundreds of billions of galaxies, lots of gas, and a bunch of other things. Yes. Also, I absolutely love the uh, world on the turtle's back reference there. But, maybe I'm struggling here with the idea, but wouldn't the whole thing be, it's as dense as air, right? That universe-sized one, or the um, solar system-sized one. But that's averaged out through the area, right? You would still have to compact that denseness or that matter down into a singularity at the center. You don't get it. By spreading that mass out. Right? Am I crazy? If you add them up, it has the mass of about a million, billion, billion suns. Which Big sounds number. a lot, but on average, the universe is not very dense. If we break up all the galaxies, stars, gas, and energy, and spread them equally <laughs> Will inside it blend? the volume of the universe, we get we'll an average density those. of about five hydrogen atoms per cubic meter. You can imagine this as the sort of ultra-thin cosmic air that makes up the universe. Okay. What would happen if we take a balloon as big as the observable universe and fill it with cosmic air? Well, it turns out that all the mass in the observable universe is more than enough to create a black hole. Actually, it's enough to make a black hole ten times larger than the observable universe. But that can only mean one thing. We should be living deep inside a truly gargantuan, cosmic-sized black hole. I'm not There's one following catch, this. We know that our universe is expanding, and an yep. expanding universe is not what you'd expect to see if you were inside a black hole. It's a good point. So our universe can't be a black hole, at least not in the naive way we've just described. Except that there's a wild and mind-bending trick the universe could play on us. To find out how, let's jump into a black hole <laughs> and die. A whole universe born inside a black hole. There's something I'm not following here. We usually imagine black holes as spheres with a singularity at their center, a point where all their mass is concentrated so much that our maths breaks down. Yeah. But this is a lie. They are so much weirder. Well, it's a lie because there's no such thing as infinity, right? In the physical world. Whenever we see infinities in math, that means that our math is breaking down. And we cannot actually explain the thing that we're trying to explain mathematically we're stepping outside of our constraints infinity is kind of like a cheat code that allows us to describe something that's extreme at least that's my understanding of it so anytime we're using infinity to describe something like we do the actual singularity we're wrong it cannot be infinite from the outside, a black hole looks like a normal black sphere, but the inside is where things stop making sense. Black holes warp the universe so much that at the event horizon, space and time switch their roles. Inside a normal sphere, space is finite, but time goes on forever. But inside a black hole, it's the other way around. Space goes on forever, but time is finite. Yeah, I think PBS Space Time described it best, actually. Um, they have an episode. I don't remember which one. They have a lot of great episodes. Check them out if you haven't, by the way. I watch every one of their episodes, but I don't react to them because it's just not good reaction material. But it's really good for just expanding your knowledge and learning more. Highly recommend them. PBS Space Time. And they have a video where they say... No matter how you move, the singularity is not in front of you. You're not falling into the singularity through space. The singularity is in your future. It's in all possible futures. And that's kind of the best way I've ever heard the flipping of space and time described inside of a black hole. 
So once inside, you see an infinite universe with no center. The geometry is too complicated, so we're simplifying. Mm -hmm. But basically, you could walk forever in one direction or walk in another direction and arrive at the same place again. But not only that, inside a black hole, time is finite and it's now running out. Yep. So after a while, you start to notice that space itself is slowly changing. In one direction, space is being stretched, while in all other directions, space is shrinking. The whole universe <laughs> is being squeezed, kind of turning into a collapsing spaghetti. Sooner or later, the whole black hole universe collapses into itself. All of space, every single part of it, is turning into a singularity. It would be really cool. Obviously not possible. But it would be super cool if towards the end of your life, when you know you're basically on your deathbed, to somehow get a craft that could survive a bit into a black hole and actually experience that, go in. You'll never be able to communicate out what you experienced, but you would know. And you would, you would die. But, I mean, if you're on your deathbed anyway, I would take that experience. Just saying. So the singularity of a black hole is not at its center or in any direction at all. It's, it's in, your in the future, future of whatever Aha. falls inside. Yep. We made a whole video about this if you want to learn more. Ooh, did we so watch that So the singularity is not a place where you can go. It's an event in time that happens. Once it happens, you and everything else yep. that fell inside the black hole will be mercilessly crushed into an infinitely <laughs> small region with infinite gravity and infinite energy. Spaghettification. Time, space, none of it matters anymore. Both kind of stop existing in ways that we would recognize. And then... Is this the end? Well. They also do a beautiful job of explaining it. I love Kurzgesagt. They've always been good at explaining complex things in ways that pretty much anybody can understand. And I love that about them, because that's hard to do. Maybe not. This collapse of the black hole universe into a singularity looks like one of the scenarios for the end of our universe, the Big Crunch, where long after the Big Bang, the whole universe collapses into a singularity again. But if... I just want to note that that is one of the possibilities for the end of the universe. But I believe that most people believe that it's an unlikely scenario, that that's not how the universe is going to end. It's going to be more of a heat death scenario. If there's a big crunch, there might be a big bounce. Like a Although ball this is a cool concept. Too much and that suddenly rebounds, space might expand again. So a new universe could be born inside a black hole. The funny thing about this scenario is that nothing has changed in the slightest outside the black hole. Watching from the outside, it's still a black sphere of nothingness. Huh. And yet, on the inside, a new universe has been born. So maybe our universe was born like this, and we are all actually inside a black hole. But if our universe can also create black holes, they I'll might like give it. birth to new universes. Is our black hole universe also just part of a universe further up that's also a black hole inside another universe? Is there an end to it? Is there one original universe? Is the cosmos huh. black holes inside black holes inside black holes? infinite black hole universes that's an if interesting concept black holes that it kind it's kind of akin to the simulation theory right if this is possible if it's possible to have a universe inside of a black hole that's in another universe right then the chances are that you are in a black hole but i don't like that logic because it assumes that it's true, that it's possible. Statistically speaking, it's absolutely right, but you're assuming that this is the case, and we don't know that. That create universes, that then create new black holes, that create new universes, this cosmic self-reproduction would be subject to natural selection. A Big Bang is a chaotic and messy event, so it's mm -hmm. possible that the new daughter universes would not always be fully identical to their mums. Sometimes physics may be slightly different, with some fundamental values higher or lower. And okay. so some universes might be able to create loads of stars, planets, and black holes. Others might not, may be creating a uniform cosmic soup where no stars, planets, and black holes form. But if all universes are born inside black holes, 
in the long run, all universe lines that don't create loads of black holes would die out. The universes with the conditions for loads of black holes would become the most common and spawn the most daughter universes. True, but what makes us think that the rules, the laws of physics would change? That they wouldn't be the same inside of every black hole? Like, I get that we don't understand inside a black hole, and we almost certainly never really will. But why do we think the laws of physics would change? I mean, they may, because it's such an extreme environment. But wouldn't it be uniform through every black hole? Do we have a reason to think that there could be variance in that? Or is that just an assumption? Survival of the fittest, but with universes instead of organisms. Our observable universe alone has created at least 10 to the power of 17 black holes so far. Oh. So maybe our universe has the physics and laws it has because it was born after a long process of cosmological selection that favored the production of tons of black holes. And that would have a lovely side effect. If universes are optimized to create as many new <laughs> black hole universes as possible, they're optimized to create loads of galaxies and stars. And thereby okay. also, by accident, the conditions for life to emerge. So universes that are the best at creating new universes are also the best at creating life. If this scenario is true, who knows how many bazillions of black hole universes might be out there, all with stars and planets potentially home to others like us. So, mm -hmm. is our universe like this? The truth is we don't know. While these ideas are based how do you on test science that? and work on paper, they're speculative and not testable. Also, cyclic universes don't actually explain why the universe exists in the first place or why it is the way it is. Instead of providing answers, these are really just new questions in disguise, so keep that in mind before getting too excited. But yeah. isn't it just wonderful and heartwarming that we're living in a universe where ideas as big as this one are even thinkable? There might be so much life. Good point. And if new universes are created constantly, maybe life will go on forever. Huh. We've heard real... That's a really interesting theory. Very interesting. But I believe... Once again, in my super unqualified belief that the simplest solution is usually the right one. The less work you have to do to explain something that works, the more likely it is that that scenario and having black hole universes calls for a lot of things to happen and a lot of assumptions to be true. A lot of things that we can't test. So I think the chances of that being the case are very low. But that's my personal opinion. I'd love to hear your opinions in the comments. Let me know if you agree with me, disagree with me. But beautiful video. Love Kurz Gasag. Their animation, the narrator, their storytelling throughout it. The music. I mean, they, they get everything right. No complaints here. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and your support. And I hope you have a wonderful day.